Welcome to episode 10 of my GAT and CNC router build series. In this installment, we're going to sort out the router clamps, the router mount, and then add a little extra. drilled out, what I can do is I can take one of these quarter 20 welding tabs and quarter 20 two and a half inch machine screw and get it all in there lined up. There we go. And there's my router clamp. Now, two and a half inches is probably a little bit long on this screw. I could probably cut it down some. So, I think I will. But, uh, basically, that's it. Okay, the first thing that I did was uh, in preparation to put this mount together. I was coming along using my calipers and found the exact center of the mounts. And then, you can't see it because it's so small. I've got a very small, using a marking knife, i got a very small line here marking the centers of my router mount. Then I came along and did the same thing with the clamps. Found the center of each clamp, marked it on a piece of masking tape. And... The reason for this, you might think this is overly simplistic, but it's true. When you're putting this thing together, just ignore these outside edges. They're, they're just not important. What's important is that these two lines, the centers, line up exactly. That way, when you go to put your router in the mount, these center holes here, are straight and you don't have them cocked off to the side like that. So we want these to be perfectly straight when we go to put these together so that the router will sit in the mount straight. Now that's going to be real important when it comes time to tram. So we need to take every step possible we can to make sure that we get it in there as straight as possible now. So with the masking tape removed and the uh, glue cleaned up, there's our finished router mount. Now, mounting the router mount is pretty straightforward, but I've done a couple of things here because it's time to introduce another modification. And what I did before I assembled anything, before I finished, before I did anything, was I ran a 17 64th bit through the router mounts. Now, they're a little bit larger. It's made for a quarter 20 uh, machine screw. And they're a little bit larger than a quarter inch diameter, but I went ahead and rounded up to a full 1764 bit just to make sure I had a little bit of clearance for the screws. And I'm using these um, quarter 20 
uh, socket head Allen screws to mount it. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll figure out where we want it put. Uh, and it's going to depend on the router you use. It's going to depend on any number of things. How high up you want it off the table, etc. And the reason I chose these Allen screws is because once I get the router put on here, it's going to be almost impossible to get in here with a screwdriver and tighten or loosen these up when I go to tram the router. So by using these screws, I can take an Allen wrench and come in from the side and get to it. And if I have to trim the Allen wrench down a little bit, so be it. But this will uh, give me a way to get in there and tighten and loosen when it comes time to tram the router. Now I've just got these in here finger tight, not especially tight, and I've got a little bit of movement here. And I'm going to want this until I get this adjusted. I want that little bit of movement. And uh, so that when the time comes, I can get my Allen wrench in here and tighten these down. Speaking of the modification that I'm making to this, um, here it is. And these are some plates that I made up. They're just very simple. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description to a measure drawing over on my website. Uh, I'll write up a website article on this and post it over on my website. So you can see it's a very, very simple just a block that mounts on the side of the Xbox. And you'll see these two sets, these two screws here. Now they're 1024 by inch and a quarter long. And I've recessed a couple of T nuts in the back. And what I'll do is I'm going to clamp these up here. They sit flush with the bottom of the Z box. I'm going to clamp these up here, drill some pilot holes, and mount them to the side of the Z-Box with uh, a number 8 by inch and a quarter long wood screw. And I've got one for each side. They just simply slide on here, slip flush against my uh, aluminum angle there at the back of the Z-Box, and then the bottom sits flush with the bottom of the Z-Box. So I'll go ahead and clamp these in place and screw them on. Now, I don't know if you could tell or not, but I drove the screws only part of the way in with my impact driver and used a uh, regular Phillips screwdriver to finish tightening them up. Now, these can be removed if you want to later on, or they can be left permanent. But the whole purpose for these is these will act as set screws. And what I'll be able to do is, with my router mount slightly, just slightly loose, I will be able to adjust the tilt of the mount ever so slightly by adjusting these screws up against the side edges of the router mount. So if I need to tip it over this way, I can loosen these screws on this, these three screws and tighten on this one to tilt the router this way. If I need to tilt it back the other way, I can loosen these up and tighten this one here. Just enough to give me, to get me straight up and down so that my router is running at a 90 degree angle to the level of my table. Just a little 
modification that I've been thinking about for a long time and that I wish I would have had on my other uh, CNC. And then once I get that adjusted, I can bring these all down to where they're snug up against it and spin these lock nuts down to hold it in place while I come back in with either Allen wrench and tighten down my mounting bolt. Now again, I'll have a free measured drawing for the uh, layout of the holes on these two little plates. Uh, free available over on my website uh, in the accompanying uh, article. Now a little earlier I said that I was going to be using these socket head cap screws and I'm gonna file this under looks good on paper. I'm not gonna be using those screws because what I forgot about was a little feature on the router that I'm going to be using. This is a Porter Cable Model 890 motor and it has this bulge up here at the top of the router motor. And that's to accommodate the electronics in here for the variable speed. It also has these little bulges on the corners here. There's four of them. Uh, two of them is where the electronics are mounted inside, and the other two hold this cap down. And because of all of these bulges, much like the pants that I used to wear when I was 20 years old, Things just don't fit. Uh, it didn't matter how much I ground off of my Allen key, I couldn't get it in here to tighten this bolt down. And down below here, even if I did get it into the bolt to tighten it, uh, tighten it down, the Allen wrench didn't have enough movement to allow me to progress it to the next hex where I could get the Allen wrench back in. So, this was a case of cheaping out and trying to use the bolts and screws that I already had rather than going down and getting a good old-fashioned quarter twenty hex head inch and a half long bolt which I am swapping out to. I've already swapped it out down here and checked it with a wrench and yes I can get in here and yes I can tighten and loosen and yes I can get up here obviously and tighten and loosen. So, we're going to um, call this the best laid plans of mice and men, etc., 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 and swap these out to the standard hex head bolts. So, with the router mount and clamping arrangement sorted out, and attached to the front of the Z-Box and my tramming plates installed. We're going to go ahead and call this the end of part 10. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. If you got anything at all out of it, please get that thumbs up button down below. And if you'd like to follow along with the rest of the build, uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Now I've put a link in the description box below to a playlist that contains all the episodes to this Gatton CNC router build. I've also put a link in the description box to Dave Gatton's website where you can get information on a Gatton CNC kit of your own. I've also put a link to my website where again you'll find a measured drawing for these tramming plates so you can lay out the holes and maybe add one to your Gatton CNC. So again, whether you subscribe to me or not, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and y'all take care. fly flies right in front of me.